An uncommonly strong low pressure system is prog to impact much of the United States next week. This region of low pressure will bring in severe weather, which includes large hail, damaging winds, as well as tornadoes into portions of Texas, Oklahoma, the Ozarks, as well as the Gulf Coast beginning on Monday, stretching through Wednesday evening into the overnight hours, in what may be another historic major severe weather outbreak. This system will be bringing in the potential for flooding rainfall through much of the southeastern U.S., stretching from the Florida Panhandle back into West Texas, um, into the uh, Gulf Coast, up through the Mississippi and Tennessee Valleys. On the northern side of this system, into portions of the northern Great Plains, as well as the northern Great Lakes region, blizzard conditions will certainly exist as well. For all intents and purposes, this system will definitely be creating hazardous and extreme conditions um, into a good portion of the United States next week, beginning on Monday. So let's get an idea on where this system is currently residing. This system is currently sitting just offshore of the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's getting ready to settle into the lower 48 and will dig towards the south. As the system makes landfall and begins to settle into the lower 48, it will develop a massive bowling ball trough and this will set up uh, and will be uh, setting up and generating massive amounts of snowfall measured in feet, not in inches, into portions of the mountain west. Check it out guys. Two to seven feet of snow accumulation within the Sierra Nevada mountain range. So it's definitely going to be a very, very strong event here guys. And with this amount of energy encapsulated within the system, it will be transmitting a plethora of moisture from the Pacific into the mountainous terrain through tomorrow. And as the system ejects across the Rockies, it will intensify even further. Many people ask, how does this occur? Well, people are under the impression that this type of terrain aids in the di uh, dissipation of these events. And sometimes, yes, that does occur. Uh, let me get my laser pointer out, guys. It makes it a little bit easier. So yes, the dissipation of events uh, within this terrain does sometimes occur. However, looking at the scale of systems like this, we will see intensification rather than dissipation. In cases like this, the conservation of angular momentum as well as the atmospheric depth uh, both play roles in the intensification process. So as this system traverses over the mountainous terrain, the col uh, column depth of the air between the tops of the mountain range as well as the top of the uh, troposphere here act to compress this broad column of air so you can see the compression happening here since this volume of air is being compressed into a smaller volume this causes the air within this volume to spread outward um, into a pancake like shape this system in a way acts like a figure skater as this volume of air spreads out into this pancake like shape the spin will begin to slow down a figure skater can spread their arms outward to slow down their spin well the same concept applies here guys to spin faster, however, the figure skater will tuck their arms inward. Similarly, once this system traverses over the mountains, it too acts as if it were spreading its arms outward, thus slowing its spin. To spin faster, uh, this system would have to mimic the acts of the figure skater. It needs to pull its arms uh, back inward. This is exactly what occurs within the atmosphere as the system completes its journey across the mountainous terrain, emerging on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains into the flatter Great Plains region. The depth of the column of air over the flatter regions will allow the system to tuck its arms in, per se, and spin faster, thus gaining more energy and intensifying. The counterclockwise motion, coupled with the extraordinary amount of energy within uh, this system will begin to draw an enormous amount of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico northward onshore, providing the much-needed fuel for strong storms to develop and persist. These actions will set up a multi-day severe weather event uh, within the southeastern and deep southern U.S., as well as along the Gulf Coast. A plethora of meteorologists across the United States, along with Justin and I, are extremely concerned by the system. With uh, this event occurring in December, many people wonder why this occurs. Well, the weather does not answer to a calendar or specific time of year. 
It answers and responds to which ingredients are present at the time of trough ejections. During this particular event, the ingredients are definitely in place uh, to, to generate a mixed bag of precipitation across much of the lower 48. And interestingly enough, this system will be occurring nearly one year, or exactly almost one year, after the historic and unprecedented tornado outbreaks within the Midwest. And yes, these aforementioned uh, events are fairly uncommon. However, we must treat these events with uh, much respect and attention um, as those events that occur smack dab in the middle of a traditional severe weather and tornado outbreak season. With that being said, if you live within portions of eastern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, portions of Louisiana, and Mississippi, uh, and definitely portions of uh, extreme western Florida, the Florida Panhandle, be on the lookout and be prepared for severe weather to impact your neck of the woods. So this event will be uh, will occur. This event will be occurring due to the amount uh, immense energy acting to raise the atmosphere over the warm, uh, moist Gulf of Mexico and affect the properties of this area into the aforementioned areas. These properties include warmer temperatures as well as high dew points or moisture. The aforementioned regions will feel uh, much like a late September or early October day rather than a normal December day. This will be leading to the severe weather events prog to impact the region from Monday into Tuesday. And another reason why we know these severe weather events will be occurring within this time period is due to the massive mid-level wind field with, uh, that will be in place. In the mid-levels of the atmosphere, imagine a giant leaf blower. This mid-level wind field will be dominating in terms of wind speed ranging from 50 to 80 miles per hour. Strong mid-level winds such as these, especially the field along the Gulf Coast, will be advecting massive amounts of moisture inland, which will be orienting in such a way that from the surface of the mid-levels, a plethora of wind shear will also be present. This aforementioned wind shear will allow thunderstorms to develop and mature to the point where they will be able to tap into these strong mid-level winds, bringing this uh, wind down to the surface, generating damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Thus, the Storm Prediction Center, or SPC, has outlined risk areas for this event as well. For the Day 3, or Monday, December 12th outlook, um, there has been introduced an area of marginal risk stretching from north central Texas um, into southeastern and eastern Oklahoma. So during this time frame, pressure falls will be occurring out ahead of the bowling ball trough, allowing for the formation of a pretty strong cold frontal zone that will be marching eastward through the aforementioned area. Moderate ascent and buoyancy values will allow for the generation of thunderstorms in the late evening and especially into the overnight hours into Tuesday morning. Cape or convective available potential energy values will range from 500 to 1000 joules per kilogram as well, allowing for more robust vertical velocity values to be achieved. However, since um, an area of stable warm air will be introduced into the boundary layer within this area, storm mode should re remain uh, elevated thus more de-amplified, thus leading to a weaker day in terms of severe weather. Moving into Tuesday, however, the de-amplification from the night previous will have generated uh, more and more lifting mechanisms, including outflow boundaries for air parcels to act upon. Thus, the SPC has introduced a slight and enhanced risk for portions of eastern Texas, extreme portions of southeastern uh, Oklahoma as well, much of Arkansas, much of Louisiana, and into west and central Mississippi, and portions of extreme southern Missouri and extreme portions of western Tennessee can get in this action as well. These outlooks have been introduced due to the fact that a fully modified gulf boundary layer will be in place, meaning a plethora of moisture, warmer temperatures, and a few other ingredients will allow for the formation of a potentially dangerous severe weather outlook. Within southern Arkansas and to northern Louisiana into portions of western Mississippi, strong updraft rotation signatures will be um, evident, thus gener uh, generating the potential for strong tornadoes EF2 or greater in magnitude are definitely certainly possible. And as this energy ejects off to the east and northeast, the SPC has also introduced a slight risk into Wednesday. As this energy ejection occurs, a suppression of instability values to the northeast will limit the severe weather into portions of Tennessee Valley, this region here, guys, 
However, along the Gulf Coast, it is definitely a different story. A few tornadoes, damaging winds, uh, as well as large hail events are certainly possible. This will include the city of New Orleans, um, which will stretch uh, to the north into central Mississippi, extending eastward into portions of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. Despite all of this information, it is best to remember that we are still 24 to 36 hours out of this event coming to fruition. Forecasts do change, and they can change very rapidly. Thus, please tune in to your local weather stations to get more up-to-date information regarding these events. Now, keeping in mind the size and strength of this storm, the severe weather outbreak is only one part of this multi-event storm. This bowling ball trough will be carrying colder air um, with it as well. All of the moisture from the south will be advected into this cold air, and accompanied by the fact that the system will be deepening, a blizzard event will be possible across portions of the northern plains. Check out these, some of these snow totals, guys. Heavy snow along with gusty winds in excess of 35 miles per hour create the perfect storm in conditions or in terms of blowing snow and blizzard-like conditions for much of South Dakota and Nebraska. With that being said, the heaviest snow axis can still shift to a different location since we are still 24 to 36 hours out. However, a swath of 8 inches or more is progged to blow up across portions of the northern plains. Some areas within South Dakota and North Dakota could receive over 2 feet of snowfall, approaching 3 feet as well. So it's definitely going to be a major crippling event, guys. So let's switch gears to the medium range forecast. Let's look at the progress uh, progression of this system as it marches to the east and the northeast. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the severe weather threat will be marching eastward, and the snowfall event will begin expanding its influence into portions of southern Canada. As it stands currently, the severe weather threat on Wednesday looks to be weaker than what is forecast for Tuesday. However, conditions and models can change rapidly, and unfortunately, it is too far out to get a good grip on what will take shape. As this system progresses further east um, into our area here in Pittsburgh, it looks like it will be a big uh, rain bag event and wind, so the soaking and flooding rain potential will now become a primary concern as the system spans over the entire eastern coast of the U.S. by Thursday into Friday. A wintry mix will be setting up uh, within the Appalachian Mountains as well, and snow will be developing into the interior northeast. So right in here, guys. This event will not be like the blizzard within the northern plains. However, snowfall accumulations are still possible within the region by the end of next week. As the system ejects off to the northeast over Maine, the lake effect machine will definitely turn on here, guys. Some snow may reach the Smoky Mountains region as well. And the Pittsburgh area may see a dusting of snow from the system. However, we will continue to monitor, monitor the progression of this system from the World Weather Authority studio. So now I know a lot of people, especially my friends and co-workers, um, have inquired about whether we will see a white Christmas or not within this region. Let me go back on. Um, so what I can say right now is that there will definitely be a system moving up the coast during this time. Or it could take another path and go through the central United States and go to the north of our area. But if it does go up the coast, it'll punch cold air into our region. Um, however, the track of the system remains uncertain. And the depth of cold air into the United States is also uncertain at this time. If this system takes a more southern track towards the Gulf of Mexico, yes, uh, we will definitely or most likely experience a white Christmas here in the Pittsburgh area. However, if this system tracks further north, if you see this track here, um, we're not going to experience a white Christmas, rather we'll experience a wet Christmas. Nevertheless, a storm will definitely be present during this time period, uh, but the finer details still need to be worked out. Ultimately, someone, somewhere, will experience a white Christmas. Regardless of track, the system is progged to hit the region right around Christmas Eve, thus provoking the question if we will see a white Christmas or not. Nevertheless, my dear friends, we will continue to monitor this situation as well. Definitely thank you all for joining me on this fine night. I truly hope you are all doing well and enjoying the weekend. Thank you for tuning into this video. I truly appreciate it. Please uh, definitely stay tuned for updates and do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have or just join me in conversation in the comment section below. Please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and sharing this information to get the word out regarding this next storm system. And if you have the means to do so, please consider donating to our channel on PayPal in the description below. We truly appreciate each and every person who watches this and interacts with us. From our home to yours, we hope you have an amazing night, and always remember, never stop chasing.